Hi, my name is Inke and I am a video editor and I live and work in Lagos, Nigeria. And so today the topic I'll be talking about is evangelizing the imagination and would focus on music and on movies. If anything, I've I've learned this year is that COVID has COVID has made us realize that we have way more content than we need in this world. I mean, obviously, maybe not way more content than we need, but we have a lot of content. And it's just thrown at you left, right, and center. And sometimes you get confused. Sometimes it's like, what, what should you do? What should you watch? You know, you're still trying to be that normal professional that you are or trying to be a professional Catholic or Christian that you are. And everything is just thrown at you and you're almost confused. Because sometimes in your heart, you know that maybe what you might be watching at that point in time or listening to will not be as ideal as it should be. And which is why we're having this talk is for us to realize what it is that we need, what it is that we want, and how we can get to that point that we're supposed to get, as Jesus has asked us to. As a cradle Catholic, and now I grew up in a completely Catholic environment from primary school to university, primary school, secondary school university and even postgrad somehow i grew up in a catholic environment i had a catholic home so i was almost shielded from a lot of things but like many creative catholics we tend to not appreciate what we have around us but i knew that after a while after a couple of years finishing university i knew that i needed to make certain decisions for myself and so i'm thrown into this industry that i really love but certain things are thrown at me that I'm, i wasn't sure how to react to because I almost brushed off those ideas um, that, uh, you know, that are thrown at me. You know, I'm just like, mm, it's fine. It, that's okay. But I knew in my heart that it wasn't fine, you know. And so you have, you're that crossroad. What should you do that will still make you stay true to yourself and still be able to help people? And, yeah, I wanted to do something that was natural to me, but also be, be able to bring people closer to God. And I've been in the media industry for such a long time uh, editing films and I knew that this was a way that I had to make this natural as natural as possible but also not lose myself in trying to make money or in trying to do something for the Nigerian industry one thing that we have to realize is that what we consume shapes our mind and I know this for one because in secondary school I was so obsessed at one point with all these super romance books but if you've read any of those super romance books before, you know that they taint your idea of what love is, of what life is, of what relationships are supposed to be like. And that was hard to brush off even after so many years later, I'm still trying to, you know, fight off that idea of what I thought should be love, should be life, you know, should be a relationship between a man and a woman. And it made me realize that what you consume, what I consume, shaped my mind more than I gave credit for. And that's why I'm having this talk. So that if you, you haven't realized it yet, you have to realize it now. What you consume, what you listen to, what you watch, shapes your mind more than you know. So now that brings us to the question, how do we live a Jesus-centered life in trying to, in trying to consume the right kind of content or even make the right kind of content? First off, living a Jesus centered life means that we have to realize that the world needs to be Christianized and not in an unnatural way, not like in making everybody you know, leave their phones and go up to the mountain and to be closer to God. I mean, that's great. That's some people's calling. But many of us are living in the middle of the world and how we react to certain things, how we act in certain situations, make people know exactly what to do because our lives are examples for our friends. So living that Jesus centered life doesn't mean that you might necess you know, necessarily have to leave where you are to go to the mountains. No, it means that you have to live in the situ situation that you are in better. And how do we do that? Sometimes it's not, it's not about, let's say, for instance, you make music or you make movies. It's not really about making Christian movies. Yes, that is good in its own world. Sometimes even those secular values or secular virtues that people make movies about can be raised to a standard that is pleasing to God. You know, you can make a movie about love and it could be something clean. You know, you can make music about even love or just about anything 
and it doesn't have to be maybe now sexualized or something like that you know so sometimes we have to realize that christianizing something means that we have to raise it to a good standard for god um working in the movie industry has somewhat been challenging sometimes because you're thrown ideas that people want you to work with but you know that this goes against what you do and imagine making a movie about something that i don't believe in but my name is in the end credit people not be like oh if you then if you if of course if you have you are going to make that movie then obviously you believe in it but i don't so it's kind of confusing to your friends or people you're trying to bring closer to god and so obviously that means that sometimes we have to say no to certain things but that's okay because if you take care of things of god god will take care of you now how do we know when it is that we're about to cross that line you know or know when we are going to make a decision i remember a story or actually a video that i watched about um, a get together that saint jose maria had with some young girls and one girl asked him oh um father how do i you know, act right with my boyfriend. Um, how do I know what line not to cross with my boyfriend? And then he goes, well, when you are together, if only do what you know that you would do if your mother or his mother was sitting in the parlor or in the room with you. And I mean, that was about purity and chastity, but we can do the same thing with our mind because obviously what you consume also helps our purity and chastity. So, if I'm watching a particular me, me movie or what, I listen to music and if my dad walks in and I would change the channel or put up that music, then I know that I might have crossed the line there because somehow we respect our parents. I don't know if this applies to everybody, but that's just it just gives us a mental picture of what you should do. Yes, we are adults. But if I know that my dad was sitting down, even as a 20-something-year-old woman, and I would not like that he listens to this with me, then I wouldn't listen to it and my dad and i enjoy so much so many kind of music together which are the old school music so i mean it is possible to have the great kind of music no one is saying you have to listen to only christian music or watch only christian movies those are good but you can also do normal things sometimes we are faced with that crossroad where people think that oh you're a christian that means you don't like this kind of thing or you don't want to invite you to certain places because of that stereotype of what christianity should be and i think that's what we need to change Christianity does not mean that we are not going to enjoy those simple things of the world. No. It means that we're going to enjoy them in a Christian way. <laughs> you know, I can remember one story once where we're talking about going out on a Friday to just hang out and just have a drink with friends. And my colleague was asking, trying to ask, oh, are you going to come? And then someone was supposed, oh, no, Kim can't come. She's Catholic. And I was wondering, um, what was being Catholic? have to do with going out to drink with friends but the fact is that that's the idea people have that idea that oh because you're christian you cannot do certain things and so people also have the idea that oh for me to be christian i have to drop certain things yes the vice is very good but you know everything's about temperance the virtues too you can enjoy normal things no but people say oh you cannot enjoy life if you're a christian that is a big lie you can enjoy life as a normal person as a good christian you can have drinks with friends you can go to the movies those things do not stop because you are living a Jesus-centered level because you're a good Christian, you know. But that's the stereotype we need to work on. And if we Christianize our world, people now find Christianity more attractive. They figure that, oh, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought it would be, you know. I don't have to just lose everything according to them. But yes, we do have to lose everything. We have to lose ourselves in trying to be good Christians. But lose ourselves in the sense that we're giving everything to God. We are giving our time to God, but we're still going to live normally. We're still going to go to the movie. We're still going to hang out with our friends. We're still going to go have a drink with friends in moderation, of course. So we're not losing ourselves in the sense that, oh, we cannot do anything fun anymore. Like, oh, Christianity is not fun. That's not true. Christianity is very fun. You know, and we can evangelize our imagination, our actions in a fun way because whether we like it or not, our actions are an example to our friend. And through our actions, we can bring people closer to God. Many people have been brought closer to God by watching people that they care about, just people around them generally, than even some conversations you would have. So our actions first need to not be hypocritical. People like, oh, she cannot leave this way and then telling me about God. That's exactly what we, we need to do. Now, how do we, what are the concrete steps that we can take to ensure that we live 
we evangelize our imagination, or even as a consumer and as an audience. The first step would be that if you think that your mind is like a sponge, I, I call myself that, my mind is like a sponge, you know, it takes in a lot of things and it, I hardly forget, which is good for education, but sometimes it's not very great for content, you know. So if you're like that, um, and you need to just cut off certain things completely, please do that. Um, because it's for your own good. At the end of the day, you cannot say, oh, you know, it doesn't affect me. That's a lie. Even if you are not as absorbing as I am, for instance, every single thing that you consume affects your mind, whether you like it or not. Because the eyes are a window to the soul. So what is going into, into your mind from your eyes, using your eyes rather, it's, it's going to your soul. So, and I also say, like, strangely, the ears are like the back door, not in a bad way of like a thief in the night, but... So what goes to, into your mind is it has more effect on your soul than you realize. So the first thing you have to do is tell yourself the truth. You know, who are you? How do you react to certain things? And if you know this triggers you, this this um, kinds of content, this kind of words, this kind of movie triggers you, please avoid them completely. Because, you know, it's like um, having a... It's like having a cup of water you put a lid on it and if it's better that you have a lid on the cup of water than for it to spill and then you now have to mop so if you can avoid it avoid it completely the second thing would be to read up on the movies that you watch and this seems like a lot of homework <laughs> because i want to watch a movie but i mean a little synopsis about a movie wouldn't hurt anybody so just so you know that oh it's a kind of content i have oh this will not be very good for me and so i'm just going to leave it like for instance for me i tried to watch john wick <laughs> it's just good i i i can watch horror films you know i can watch some more of action movies but i just found john wick so gruesome that i just knew that okay this was not good for me and i just stayed away from it completely um so if, you, if you're that kind of person so read up on something that you're about to watch ask maybe ask watch some reviews as well or ask friend that oh, have you watched this how what do you think about it and then if that if that doesn't appeal to you then please don't with that then for the music i mean it's about the same thing if you, you can check out the lyrics and you're like oh, what does this say sometimes you actually don't know what some of these artists are saying you're just bumping your head to something that is not quite nice and if it's a muse if it's some kind of music that's in another language and just singing you can try to want to find out what does this mean as opposed to just like singing and then you're singing your way into you know some venial sin or more thirdly you can't say oh what i listen to what i watch doesn't affect me like i had said earlier everything that we do affects everyone you know and if we believe in the communion of sins as a catholic our actions has a a communal effect so you can say oh um i don't i don't owe anything to another person why do i have to check what i do you know, the more that you are forming your conscience, the more you are forming your mind, the more you are able to help your friends as well. So don't think about it like, oh, what I'm doing doesn't affect anybody. It does. You know, everything has like a communal uh, effect. So for us to be able to help our friends better, we have to also be better because we cannot give what we don't have. And yeah, so don't have that mindset that what you do doesn't affect anybody. It does. And another thing would be to practice the virtue of temperance, you know. If, you, if you're that kind of person, like, I'm a planner, so um, I usually can't catch my entire day. I can say, okay, I'm going to watch movies from three to four and maybe not exceed that. If you're that kind of person, fine, but just have, or if, you're, if you have an iPhone, for instance, and you want to, you're watching Netflix on your phone, and you can do screen time where it's like, okay, I want to watch Netflix for 30 minutes, and after that, it kind of like shuts off. Things like that. Those are concrete steps that you can take to sort of evangelize them and sort of ensure that you're living within certain limits you know because temperance is key in every single thing that we do so what we listen to and what we watch we have to practice a lot of temperance it helps and that's how we are we keep jesus in in the loop <laughs> in our lives you know and for music don't be afraid of for some quiet time you know, some people, i know some people that personally that can't go 10 minutes <laughs> in the bathroom without playing music you know don't be scared of that quiet time for your mind to reflect on certain things even if it's maybe even read something instead if you take a spiritual book so finally we'll end with this that living a jesus-centered life something that we would 
keep doing over and over again. We should not get scared to begin again. You know, uh, the main point is to pick ourselves up when we think that we've done something that we shouldn't have done or listened or watched something that we shouldn't have done. You know, let's pull it off, you know, start again, delete it if you have to. Christ is our model and we have to know that even he, he had friends. He went to party. In fact, his first miracle was at the wedding at Canaan. I'm sure there was music there. So I always like to think that he loved music as well, you know. He had divine taste in music. Great. And he taught us all of all these things to live a normal life with our friends, enjoying normal things as well. And so who better can we ask? Who better to ask for help than him, Christ our, our Lord? And also we can ask help from our lady because you know she saw those 30 years, so she knew what he loved, what he did not love, you know, his his preferences, and so she can teach us to have the right preferences according to Jesus, who is our center. So if we keep asking her help, her help, she would obviously, obviously always come to our, our aid. And yes, thank you for listening and do have a nice rest of the conference. Mm-hmm.